whole universe. In our case, think about like right now, everybody's afraid of competing with Amazon. Right. In our case, we have something very defensible because we have a custom-made product uh, that is not a commodity. Like once you have your formula, this is your e-salon formula. You cannot replicate it anywhere else. So then you, we have a, a high commitment from our clients. So you have patents on your formulas? We, we have patents on the process to do custom blender hair color. Oh, okay. Uh, and we have our own proprietary formulas. So we have a, a lot of IP that protects the business model. Do you have a mentor in life? Um, I think I, in sort of a mentor, I have had like like the ability to be working together with people in a capacity where where I get to share ideas and get feedback. Do you think that's um, a, a result of lack or commitment? Which which part? The the part of uh, of you being in, in this kind of business and being successful as you are at this point. Do you think that has to do more with luck? You being luck, you being lucky guy, or it's more related to your preparation, your your passion, your dedication. I think I heard from one person that that said, uh, "the the more I work, the luckier I get." Right. So there's something there about just keep on working. Uh, but at the same time, I was really lucky that I that that I was born into a family that could provide my education, that could provide a lot of stability. Right. Um, and then I happened to be in Los Angeles uh, at the time that the first internet wave was starting. I happened to be lucky to have friends who were starting a business that was successful that I joined. So then I think it's a combination of both. But you were ready for those opportunities because otherwise, I mean, but also the family, the the opportunity that they gave you. So it's a mix, correct? It's completely a mix. I think you cannot, you can be very hardworking. And if you're working in something that is uh, happens to be an industry that's declining and it's just not doing well, you can have terrible luck and not do well. Right. You can have a lot of luck, but then you may not be able to capitalize on that because you're not working hard on that. So I think at the end of the day, it's a little bit of both. So and you need to be ready to move on to the next chapter in life, you know, otherwise... I think you have to be open for opportunity. So in our case, like when we saw something as like custom color, hair color, if you're not open about why not, let's do research and then approach this more into like, yeah, it could be a great business, like, yeah, so you have to be open to ideas. Right, right. Do you have a habit that helps you deal with the, the stress of your uh, job at this day? Um, I am part of a great group called YPO, Young Professional, Organ- Young, uh, Professional Organization. It is a great support group. I meet with my peer group once a month. So it's a really great way of like sharing um challenges that we like we are each facing my wife is an incredible person so that I, she's quite uh someone who helps me um at the same time i i try to do activities outside of like only business so many people like to read a lot of business books at night i actually sometimes need to read something that is it helps me disconnect from business because mm-hmm. otherwise I keep going and then I don't sleep. So I try to read like novels, historical novels, some things that could be outside of business so I can actually get to have a good night's sleep. What would be your advice for young entrepreneurs, people like you 20 years ago that have, have they have ideas today and they, you know, the most common place, I want to launch an, a website, I want to launch an e-commerce venture what would be your, your advice for that people? I mean, I think just doing as much research before you venture and then balance your hunch with, with research is quite something important because then if you have like only research but you don't have a hunch then or you don't have an intuition, then it may not be right. If you only have intuition but you don't have research, then there are some mistakes. So I think you need both. Uh we talked a little bit about just talking to as many people as possible, and that's part of the research phase. Um, and I guess, like, you have to consider what makes sense for the type of business that you're starting. I think every business is different. Right. Uh, if it's a technology business, it's a services business, it's a retail business. Um, I think every every single one has its own 
own characteristics. Right. If I give you a billboard in the busiest corner in, in Los Angeles, which message would you put on for the people to be inspired? I think something is uh, simple and uh, something that I've been hearing uh, like resonating a lot lately. I think that a quality in business, people or in general, that is uh, not value as much, but it's quite important is just be nice. I think just if you are nice, then so many things are better. So if you are nice to someone, then that person will be in a better mood and increase for a better society and increase for a better business environment. So I think just like something as simple as being nice is something that you can be still, like have a tough position, but you can be nice about it. You can have, like, you can be helpful. You can, uh, Just be nice. I love it. I love it. Very interesting. Is there any other, the last uh, message that you would like to share with another entrepreneurs that are out there, you know, fighting for for their dreams well, I think listening to podcasts like yours and then getting inspiration I mean you at the end of the day anyone who's running a business is just another human being that has the same weaknesses and strengths and then it's just like working hard and then everybody has inspiration everybody fears things so then it's just we're all humans and then the more that I meet more people that have successful businesses I just realized that it's just another human being that happens to like be very hardworking and and smart and then just like, but it's just another human being. So then just keep doing it, uh, do your research, like um, talk to people. Uh, you, you get to learn a lot from just talking to people. Right. So Francisco, I wish you the best in your endeavor. I think your idea is awesome. I was very surprised. And now that I'm talking to you, I can realize why it's so successful. I, mean, I know that you have three other partners, but you being the 25% of the opinions in that room, I understand how you you were able to put together something that is so detail-oriented, so uh, emotional also, and you were able to, to be disruptive in, in this uh, space which is very difficult to do. So I'm very honored to, to, to meet you here and to be able to talk to you. And I hope our listeners also appreciate this conversation. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure uh, speaking with you and your audience. So good luck. And uh, we'll see what happens to, to you. We'll do a follow-up, okay, in a couple of years. And perfecto, we'll see. perfecto. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. If you want to learn more about eSalon, go to eSalon.com. Thanks so much for listening to our show this week. If you want to find out more about our podcast, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Comoloiso, or visit our website at comoloiso.com. Please subscribe to our show on Apple Podcasts or anywhere you listen to your podcast. If you want to reach out to comment or suggest a topic, please email hellocomoloiso.com. This show was produced at the iHeart Studios in Los Angeles. I'd like to thank our producers, Fernando Alejandro Schiantarelli and Amelia Machiavello, our sound engineer, Martin Garcia, and Annie Sidervich, our general producer. Como Lo Hizo is a co-production from Premier Radio Network and Crece Grow Media. I am Fernando Schiantarelli. Thanks again for listening.